Let's simplify the details of Gemini, Google's bold new AI model, which is challenging ChatGPT's dominance. Google's ChatGPT competitor Gemini just launched, and there's tons of information about what it is, its specifications, how good it is compared to other AI models, what it can be used for, and where end users can use it right now. There's so much news and information emerging about Gemini that it can take an entire day to sort through the noise and figure out what Google's new AI model actually is under the hood. So do you want to see through all the noise, find out what Gemini actually is in simplified terms, see its coolest examples, and find out how you can use it right now? Well, by the end of this vid, you'll be able to do just that. And as a bonus, you'll find out if Gemini is actually better than ChatGPT. So what is Gemini? Gemini is Google's newest and most dynamic large language model. It's been highly anticipated by the general public for a while now, and was supposed to be released in 2024. But in a shocking turn of events, it was unexpectedly released way ahead of schedule. It actually caught a lot of AI enthusiasts by surprise. Gemini is basically Google's answer to OpenAI's ChatGPT. Now, this is a huge deal for both Google and its customers in general, mainly because in early 2023, Google was rumored to be freaking out about ChatGPT. The existence of this model alone was an existential threat to Google itself. Why would anyone use Google Search anymore if they could just ask a chatbot like ChatGPT for more direct answers to their questions. But that existential fear put Google into overdrive. They put all hands on deck and started working on their own version of ChatGPT right away. So what are the details about Gemini and is it better than ChatGPT? Let's dive into it. There's one huge difference between Gemini and ChatGPT. Gemini was built as a multimodal large language model from the ground up. In this site, Techopedia, they compare unimodal and multimodal models. They say in contrast, multimodal architectures that can integrate and process multiple modalities simultaneously have the potential to produce more than one type of output. That's the main benefit of multimodals. Now, why is being designed as a multimodal AI model from the ground up so important? It's because it makes the end model work so much better. Instead of creating separate models and then stitching these different models together after the fact, like ChatGPT does with its chatbot and Dolly 3 image generator, Gemini is built from its inception to work seamlessly with text, video, images, audio, and more. This is the difference between ChatGPT and Gemini. Think of it like this. Apple makes the iPhone to work seamlessly with their other products like the MacBook Pro. Both the iPhone and the MacBook were designed from the ground up to work with each other. Would you rather have that setup or would you rather have a MacBook and an Android phone? I think you'd rather have the prior setup because if you've ever had any experience dealing with Macs and Androids, you'll know it's almost impossible to get those two devices to sync and work well with each other. So in layman's terms, Gemini is the apple of LLM models. They design their text, video, image, and audio models to work with each other seamlessly from the get-go. And OpenAI is patching text, image, and audio models together after the fact, just like trying to pair an Android phone with a MacBook. It's clunky. So now that we have an understanding of Gemini and its multimodal design, let's see directly from Google what that means. Gemini is our largest and most capable model. It means that Gemini can understand the world around us in the way that we do uh, and absorb any type of input and output. So not just text like most models, but also code, audio, image, and video. What's amazing about Gemini is that it's so good at so many things. As we started getting to the end of the training, uh, we started seeing that Gemini was better than any other model out there on these very, very important benchmarks. For example, each of the 50 different subject areas that we tested on, um, it's as good as the best expert humans in those areas. As you can see in the video, the main benefit of Gemini's multimodal design is in the results. And that's what all that really matters, right? The end users of Gemini and ChatGPT really only care about how good the product is when they're using it. Well, independent benchmark tests support this as well. Tests have been run on both ChatGPT and Gemini, and the results are eye-opening. So here are all the benchmarks, and all of them compare Gemini to GPT-4. In almost in every single benchmark test, Gemini 
Gemini beats GPT-4. This is a general benchmark and the MMLU benchmark. They have a reasoning benchmark and there's a bunch of different ones here. Big Bench Hard, Drop, Hella Swag, a math benchmark. But on every single one, except for this one right here, Gemini, and this is the ultra version of Gemini, which we'll talk about in a little bit, all beat GPT-4. And then there's also multimodal benchmarks. So these are independent benchmarks, independent tests that test both Gemini and GPT-4. And this is the results that they came away with. And again, in almost every situation, whether it's unimodal or multimodal, Gemini beats GPT-4 and GPT-4 Vision in this case. So it compares audio, video, image, all these different things. And it's not just one benchmark for images, for example, or any of these categories, it's multiple benchmarks. Now that we know Gemini outperforms ChatGPT in almost every important testing benchmark, let's see what this new model can do in real life. So this first example shows someone hiding a crumpled piece of paper under some cups and moving them around to see if Gemini can figure out where that crumpled piece of paper is. Let's see how it goes. Cup to the left. Nice. This next one's about what can Gemini do with two balls of yarn? Let's see how this goes. Give me some ideas for what I could make with this. I see pink and green yarn. How about a dragon fruit? Or how about a green cake with a pink heart? Okay, how about these colors? And maybe show me some animals. Okay, now I see blue and pink yarn. How about a pig with blue ears? Or an octopus? Or a bunny with a pink nose? Ooh, I'll keep those in mind. And then this example, the user pulls up a scene on their phone of a movie. It's not even from the movie itself. It's something acting like they're in the movie to see if Gemini can figure out what movie it is. What movie are they acting out here? I think they are acting out the famous bullet time scene from The Matrix. Ooh, nice. Very cool. And these are some custom examples that I came up with myself. I went on to bar.google.com, which we'll go over a little bit later in this video, and I typed in this prompt. Write me a Twitter thread about the most recent and most popular AI news story released today. Make it 10 tweets long. And then it went ahead, found a new story. OpenAI develops web crawler in preparation for ChatGPT5, and it made all the tweets about it. It. When it first outputted this, I wanted images to go along with each tweet, so I made a little secondary prompt to go along with the first one. I said, do it again, but include an image with each tweet, and that's exactly what it did. I mean, this is pretty incredible. You couldn't do this on ChatGPT. You can, but it's not as good as it is on Gemini. As you can see, you can see all the images. The tweets are really on point and great, and these are all recent news stories of today, which is incredible. So next up, one more example. Actually, I uploaded an image of a bunch of uh, food, and I said, give me a grocery list of everything in this image. And that's exactly what it did. All of these examples show the multimodal components of Gemini. It can do images, text, video, live video, anything. Um, it's pretty incredible. And all those different models work together seamlessly, which isn't always the case with ChatGPT. Now, Gemini is not a one-size-fits-all product. This new model comes in various sizes to help anyone accomplish their goals no matter how large or small. The first one is Ultra, and it's the most powerful version of Gemini and is still being tested for safety right now. Pro is the version that Bard uses and can be used at bard.google.com right now. And finally, Nano is the smallest version and is the version of Gemini that's meant to be used locally on devices like smartphones. So for the average person, where can they use Gemini right now? They can use it at bard.google.com. It's available right now and if you have experience using ChatGPT, then the user interface will be easy to understand. Even if you have no experience at all using AI, the BARD website is very intuitive. You just have to enter a prompt and that's it. Gemini will also be integrated with Pixel Pro 8 smartphones via the Nano version of Gemini. Again, that's the smallest size Gemini version, allowing users to summarize recordings and use smart reply features in WhatsApp. And then in the coming months, Gemini will be available in products like Google Search Ads, the web browser Chrome, and Duet AI. Eventually, the most powerful Gemini product 
Ultra will be released to end users through Bard Advance. It's just a more advanced version of Bard, which is a cutting edge AI experience like no other. That will be released once safety testing is finished, which is most likely to be sometime in 2024. So with all that said, is Gemini better than ChatGPT? In my personal opinion, it is. Based off my own personal testing between ChatGPT and Bard and all the independent benchmark testing that confirms that. But whatever conclusion you come to you after using Gemini, I think we can all agree on something. That is, AI is changing and advancing at lightning fast speed. So in summary, we learned about what Gemini is and how its multimodal design is different than ChatGPT. We saw some cool examples of how Gemini is being used right now, and we found out how to use Gemini via Google's Bard. With that said, that's a wrap. Thanks so much for tuning in. Please subscribe to this video channel, Fry AI, and our email newsletter at fry and AI.com forward slash subscribe. We'll see you again later in the week. This is Ryan signing out. Have a great night.